Hi everyone, welcome back tonight. Isn't it great that we can be together online? And I hope you've had a lovely Sunday afternoon. Well, we've been talking about being under the pressures of life. And you know, this week I was just thinking about how, how your viewpoint can change the place that you're in. You can seem really pressured at an appointed time and actually you can be in a completely different circumstance later on and feel like that is totally pressurizing. You know what I mean? I um, notice that no matter people's age now, they can feel the pressures of life, whether they're young or old, teenagers or or retired, you can still be under pressure. And um, you know, before Christmas, it was super busy and I was thinking, oh man, I just need to get through Christmas. And then isn't that funny that, you know, we will be in January or February and think, oh my gosh, it's so busy. Perspective on things, perhaps. But you know, um, how do we deal with the pressures we're in? And we, uh, Graham and I got, I think when we were newly married, a pressure cooker, you know, one of those cookers that uh, will cook a piece of meat super fast and you can uh, boil it up and it has this steam valve. Well, you know, if you don't uh, let it off when the, the water's gone out, you can have steam going everywhere, the pressure has exploded um, and it is, uh, dispensing all over your range top or in your kitchen making a great big mess we can be like that with our life you know that the pressure begins to build up and if you don't release that if you don't deal with that at the time there becomes an explosion and um, my family were joking with me today that um, uh, they didn't need the earmuffs for the power tools, they needed the earmuffs for my voice. Um, isn't that funny? Because I was making a fuss over um, a hair tie. Anyway, because of the pressures of life, 20 minutes to find a hair tie this morning. How does that happen? I don't know. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? It could be as si something as simple as a hair tie. It could be the last resort in your pressure cooker of life. But have you thought about the immense pressure that Jesus was under in his life? Like I can't. I was thinking this way. I can't really fathom that immense stress he was under, how he journeyed through his life as a young man. He had to wait on people. He had to answer to people's needs. He had the Pharisees after him. He knew what the end outcome would be. And yet he managed day-to-day -day life. He relied on God and in his circumstance. I also thought about the story of Job. And um, in Job 1 to 8 it says, Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him that is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Job was a man that stood out to God because of his heart attitude. So Satan tested him with his everything. And we know that in Job, he lost his family, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his stock, um, his servants. His everything was stolen or set on flames. And he was broken as broken as could be. And what sort of pressure was he under that he that he was being tested by Satan? Can you imagine that pressure and that time in his life? But his response was this in Job 1, 20 to 22. It was, at this, Job got up and he tore his robe and he shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship. And said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised in all this. Job did not sin, but charging God with wrongdoing. You know, here was Job, and when everything was thrown at him, he fell to his knees and worshipped God. He gave over everything, said, you know, it doesn't actually matter about those things or where I am or what I have. I came with nothing and everything is 
is is God's. Are we like that today? And so I was thinking, how are we handling under pressure? How are you handling the pressures of day to day? So one thing for me is, you know, where did Job turn to? Where did Jesus turn to? He turned to heaven above. Draw, number one is draw near to God. We need to draw near to him. That's what Job did. He first of all fell to his knees and prayed. What did Jesus do? He would retreat and go to God. So often we push away the things that are important to us and who is important most of all is Jesus. If there's anything we need more so uh, when we're under pressure is Jesus. The only way to cope when we're under pressure is going to him. Um, when they were in the fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who was there with them? Jesus. His spirit. Jesus is, is what we need and we need to spend that time drawing near to him. The second thing is stay true to who you are. You know, our identity matters and how we carry ourselves through pressures of life. We need to be that godly example. We need to be ourselves. We need to be true to God and rely on his principles. In Psalms 1, 1 it says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but who delights in the law of the Lord and who meditates on the law day and night. The person is like a tree planted by a streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaves do not wither. Whatever they do prospers. You know, in our times of pressure, we need to have a godly standard. We need to not bend over to the ways of the world or to the things that look and maybe taste good, you know, the, like the fruit of the tree. But we need to yield our heart and our principles to Jesus. You know, don't we want to be like that tree that will stand firm, that will not waver? Our foundations need to be deep onto Christ's principles. The things that matter most in our life. Taking that time to read the word of God. Taking that time, as I said before, to draw near to God. To worship to him. To pray to him. Focusing on godly principles. It's easy to let the habits of the world sneak in when we are under pressure. Ah, oh, it doesn't matter if I read the Bible today. Ah, oh, it doesn't matter if I um, just stay behind and have a drink or three or four at work today. Oh, that will make things feel better. But really, we need to be true to Jesus and our principles. The third thing is, don't take things out of perspective. You know, this too will pass. Um, I, my family will probably say I have a habit of over-dramatizing things. Now, if um, you were at my house uh, just before, the hair tie, because let's talk about the hair tie. It's a tiny wee hair tie, okay? I was being totally dramatic. The I was thinking as I pulled away. Um, oh, the neighbors probably heard and thought, what a crazy lady being there. I was joking. But um, if we could take that into uh, perspective with this, we can be... We can take our pressures of life out of perspective for the season we're in. We can over-dramatize things. We can think it's an end of the world situation, not just a hair tie. Um, at EXO Kids, you know, often children will come to us needing an ice pack, a band-aid, a bandage, thinking their leg or their arm is going to dro drop off and I tell you, uh, you know, ice, ice, block, um, ice packs and band-aids are like miracle workers once you've noticed it and, and put some love on it. But, you know, just like a child, we can over-dramatize our situation instead of putting it into perspective. 
Under the pressure, we can over-dramatise a whole lot of situations, whether it be family, workplace, our friend situation, uh, whether it be what we're wearing, whatever, we can over-dramatise it. We need to put these things into perspective. In 2 Corinthians 4, 16, it says, Therefore, do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet in inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles, momentary, are achieving us for eternal glory that far outweigh them. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. What is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. Just like Job, he focused his eyes on Jesus. Now, maybe he was being a bit dramatic when he ripped his clothes and pulled his hair. That's quite a dramatic response. But he knew to point his faith and his life on what was unseen in Jesus. You know, don't lose heart for where you are at today. You know, don't lose heart and be overwhelmed by the pressures of today. A really good thing to do is get some advice from somebody else. Uh, share the load, as in, as in find someone that you can totally trust and confide in. And maybe say, hey, could you pray for me today in this? And she, will you listen to me? I need an outward perspective. You know, we become so narrow-minded with things. We become so short-sighted and overwhelming like the pressure cooker instead of taking hold of someone else's advice. Instead of not losing sight on tomorrow or not losing heart on what God has for you. Don't lose perspective in your situation. And third thing is, Embrace that moment. Now, you could think that's quite an um, ironic thing to say when you're under pressure. But what does pressure bring? It brings change. It brings um, a new season. You know, after pressure, there is always uh, often a new season, a new outlook. Um, you change under the pressures of life. And have you ever thought about what grows under pressure? Have you thought about how God changes us all under pressure? Uh, have you remembered that feeling of being on a roller coaster? I don't really like that. You might be one of those people that are a daredevil and like the roller coaster. But I can still imagine that feeling, you know, when there's that sudden jolt and you kind of embrace yourself and you're ready for the ride. And so I guess with this, I'm saying embrace that moment because th going through it will produce something of value. Sometimes we can feel like our life is like that roller coaster. And maybe, um, like me, you want to get off or you're feeling like so unprepared. Well, prepare yourself in the pressure. Do what you can to alleviate stress. You know, think about, oh, what you need to be doing or what you can change in your pressures. You know, some simple daily habits can relieve a lot of pressure. Like, oh, I'm going to make the kids' lunches at night so that the morning's not so crazy. Oh, I'm actually going to prepare uh, for the work day the night before so that I don't start on the back foot. Some really simple things can alleviate pressure. Maybe it's that... Oh, I'm going to go to bed half an hour earlier so that I have a decent sleep. Before Christmas, when things were pressure, and I thought, I have so much to do, I need to change some things. So I decided, oh, I'm going to work for an extra half an hour at night uh, later, and I'm going to start work an extra half an hour in the morning. Now, it wasn't a huge change or anything like that. Doable, wasn't it? But it would relieve some pressure. So think about what ways you can embrace in this situation. If you're always living in the pressure, in panic mode, it's not going to help you to ride through the situation. And so what I'm saying by this is embrace where you're at and 
think about what you can do to deal with the situation. Don't just be all hands up screaming like on the roller coaster, but what can you do to alleviate the stress? I also thought that in everything, uh, we can do something good for someone else. In Ephesians 2.10 it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us today. You know, there's always someone worse off than us. And um, this week I was uh, at the hospital because Emma's been, um, had some surgery, and it was a bit pressured and all these red light changes and you're only allowed to have one visitor at a time and there was a whole lot of people sitting in cars waiting on their sick loved one and I thought how sad is this and I just thought you know for me I was blessed that you know we weren't in the situation that maybe our you know that it was terrible and the whole 10 of us had to be there you know, there's always somebody worse off than us in that situation. Like there was a car load of a family and I was thinking, oh man, God, I hope their family is actually okay. I also thought afterwards, man, I should have, and I didn't. I only thought about this when I was thinking about the sermon, actually. I should have done something. Imagine if I had, you know, delivered cold drinks to every car down there or, um, you know, a cookie or something like that. They might have thought I was crazy, but there is always somebody worse off than us. So we can do something good even in our pressures of life. What can you do in the pressures of life? Maybe it's for your team. Maybe it's for your family that have been quite pressured. Maybe it's actually that you're feeling the weight of this week, taking time out to spend it with the kids or to watch a movie, or to do something that is out of character for you. We can do something even under the pressures. There is definitely a way that we can help someone else. You know, and lastly, I think, under the pressure, there is always a tomorrow. In Isaiah, it says, um, Isaiah 40, it says, Verse 28, do you know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power to the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagle. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not be faint. Don't we want to be those people that will believe in tomorrow? Don't we want to be a person who will rise up like eagle's wings? You know, Job knew where his strength came from. His strength is in Jesus. Jesus knew to go to God that his strength came from him, that under the pressures of life, we need to think about our tomorrow. We give up way too quickly um, in our self-pity and of that it's too hard. We give up in our relationships. We give up in our workplaces. We give in to our natural response rather than his supernatural power. We want to be people that will rise up like on an eagle and be ready to fly. There is a tomorrow. There is a plan and a purpose for your life. And even if you're feeling the pressure today, be thinking, how can I wait upon the Lord? How can I focus on what He has for me rather than the weight of today? Uh, you know, in 2 Corinthians 9, Eight, it says, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. You know, this is a season. We are living in a season. And tomorrow there is joy and hope and a rising up on eagle's wings. 
Are we going to focus on Jesus and the pressures, um, let the pressures side away, deal them, give them, hand them over to him and rise up on eagle's wings. He will bring good and blessing and future to your life. Be one who will stand above all else. Let's pray together tonight. Lord Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you that you never leave us. You never forsake us. We thank you, Jesus, that you are on the throne, that you are in control of all circumstances. And Lord God, I pray for those things that are pressures in our life today. Lord, that we will wait upon you, that we will hand them to you, that we will learn through them and we will trust you in everything we do. Lord God, right now, if there's anyone out there that doesn't yet know you, Jesus, I pray right now that they make that decision for you to be their Lord and Savior. And Lord God, I pray that we will focus this week on you, not the things of the world, that we will be a light to someone else. In your mighty name, Jesus, amen. Well, I, I pray that you have a blessed week. If you've made a commitment today, that is the best decision that you can ever possibly make. And we would love to journey with you to know Jesus more. Please connect with us. Well, we will see you soon. God bless. Hey, thanks for being with us tonight, XO Online. I hope that message has really spoken into your life. Hey, maybe you have never given your life to Jesus and you know that it's time. I, I really need to find God for myself. The good news is that there's no better time than right now. And uh, we can give our lives to Jesus at any time. The Bible says that if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, that he died on the cross for my sins and rose again, that I'm saved. And that's as simple as it is. You don't need to go to church for 10 times or 20 times or, or do this or do that um, to try and make your way good enough to be a Christian. All you need to do is tr put your trust and your life in Jesus' hands and the Bible says you will be saved. And so if that's you tonight, you know I need to surrender my life to Jesus. I I'm gonna say a really quick prayer and if that's you, I want you to make it your prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, tonight I surrender my life into your hands. I ask you to forgive me of my sins Fill me with your love and your peace. Lord, from this day on, I choose to follow you with my life. Lord, help me with this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, if you've made that commitment for you personally tonight, it is the most greatest commitment that you could do. It's the greatest thing that you could do. Hey, we want to connect with you. Go on our web page and fill in the form and send it through to us. Or give us a call here at the church or one of the team if you know them. We want to journey with you and help you to learn more about Jesus and to know his peace in your life and great fellowship. Hey, have a fantastic week. Get along to a life group this week. We'll see you next Sunday.